Hi, my name is Quinn Duffy. I'm the game director on Company of Heroes 2, the Western Front Armies here at Relic Entertainment. We're going to give you a brief intro to the game, talk about how it differs from other strategy games you might have played, and show you how the new Ober Commando West Army is unique. The Ober Commando are designed to reflect the German Army of late 1944, resurgent on the offensive, built around battle-hardened infantry and massively powerful tanks. At the same time, they were facing the challenge of economic collapse. In the US Forces video, I talk a bit about a couple of key differences between the Company of Heroes franchise and other strategy games. Tactical maneuvering, cover, and range-based combat are very important, but there are a couple of other parts of that tactical gameplay we'll cover here, namely flanking and facing. Flanking is a near necessity, and you especially want to try to get around behind armored vehicles where their armor is thinner. You can also flank cover. Because cover is directional, getting side shots or getting behind the enemy negates any protection they were getting and allows you to kill their infantry more effectively. Facing is another important element in Company of Heroes 2. A machine gun or anti-tank gun is effective, but only if it's facing the right way. These kinds of units can be very powerful, but you need to consider their placement. We also draw on history for a lot of our gameplay. So you'll find that rifles can really do nothing to a heavily armored vehicle. A rifle is a terrible counter to a tank, but an anti-tank rocket launcher is pretty decent. We call this the counter system, so you need to know what your enemy is doing and have the resources to build the counters to their unit choices. Speaking of resources, let's also take a second to talk about the economy of Company of Heroes 2 compared to other strategy games. There are no workers in the game, no mines to mine or trees to harvest. You earn resources by capturing territories on the map. You can check the mini-map or the points on the battlefield to see what resources are granted. Resources fulfill different roles and follow a general theme or context. Manpower is required for all units. You're going to need fuel to really tech up to the bigger units, which makes sense because tanks burn a lot of fuel. Munitions are generally what you spend for weapons or abilities like throwing grenades. In some game modes, like Victory Point, you have to hold a majority of the VPs on the map, so don't lose sight of that goal. You can win a lot of battles, but still lose the war. Now, overall, the Oberkommando West don't get as many resources as the other armies because of Germany's worsening economic situation in 1944, but they capture territory exactly the same way. If you don't have much of the map captured in the first couple of minutes, you're going to start falling behind, so territorial expansion is critical. Use your infantry to capture territories on the map to increase your income and deny the enemy his or her income. Pushing your front lines out gets you into combat with your enemy, and this is where you need to take stock of your situation. In the US Forces video, we cover some of the questions you need to ask yourself from a tactical standpoint, but another thing to pay attention to is what the enemy is building. You'll often get audio cues for what your enemy is doing. If you start hearing or seeing vehicles all of a sudden, consider making that transition to anti-tank weaponry. The Oberkommando have lots of options. You can equip your infantry with Panzerschrecks, you have small team weapons like the Raketenwerfer, which can fire from inside buildings. And you can go all the way up to heavy vehicles like the Jagdpanzer IV. On the other hand, if you see lots of infantry, it might indicate your enemy isn't ready for a vehicle, so you can dictate the strategic arc of the game by teching up. Catches infantry with artillery, or vehicles like the 251 Flak Haftrax or Panzer II Luke's light tanks. Their 20mm cannons can chew through enemy troops. Either way, you have to see what kinds of options you can afford, and that leads us back to resources. So what do you spend your resources on? Just like the other armies, to get bigger and more powerful weapons and units, you need to build buildings. The Oberkommando differ in that they have a very flexible building system. Their SWS half-tracks can be converted into structures that can produce units. You'll get one of these half-tracks at the beginning of the game, and once you've converted it into a structure, or one is destroyed, you'll get a new one automatically. Each of the three structures does something cool apart from building units. One allows you to transfer resources and repair vehicles. One can reinforce and heal infantry. And one is heavily armed with a 3.7 centimeter flat cannon. As a player, you can put these buildings into any territory you own. So experiment with strategies around placing your structures on the map. Where do you want to repair your tanks? What about retreating your troops? And where do you want some extra firepower? 
You can create some nice defensive zones, and in team games you can use your buildings to support your friends as well. Now here's a great way to interact with your structures. You see the tabs across the top of the HUD? Every army has them, and they all link to their tech buildings and allow you to build units and set rally points for your troops without having to leave the front lines. Definitely try to use the tabs. Overall, the Obra Commando are a very potent force, but you need to be aggressive to get the really big guns out and start tearing into your enemy. Experiment with using your base buildings effectively and learn the maps. Your lighter vehicles can help keep back enemy infantry while you keep your troops alive so they can earn their five levels of veterancy and become really scary. And when you get one of the big tanks out, don't waste it. If you leave it alone out there, it's gonna get hit with everything the other armies have. Company of Heroes 2 is like all strategy games in that you get equal parts challenge and reward. There's a lot to learn, but an incredible amount of content to play with and to master. One of the best resources you have is our community. They're engaged and knowledgeable, so please visit our forums or community sites and watch games on Twitch TV or YouTube to really pick up the nuances of the game. We'll see you on the battlefield.